In this video, I'm going to show you how to use AWS IAM step-by-step -step to create an IAM user, an IAM group, and an IAM policy to read and write files on an S3 bucket. Let's get started. This video will be broken down into five sections. Creating an IAM user, creating a new S3 bucket, creating an IAM policy to read and write files to the S3 bucket, attaching the policy to the user and testing, and finally creating a group and switching over to using the permissioning via the group from the IAM user. In order to accomplish the above tasks, I will be using a brand new AWS account that I've created specifically for these YouTube videos. You don't have to use a brand new account if you already have access to one, but it can be helpful to make sure you at least have an administrative user that has full permissions to the account. If you do create a brand new account, you'll be able to accomplish all of these tasks as the root user. Normally, I would not recommend using the root user and would instead recommend you use an IAM user. But because this video is about how to use IAM, I'm gonna let it slide this time. If you are using a brand new AWS account, everything that we do should fall under the AWS free tier limits. So you shouldn't incur any charges. If you are using an account that's been around for a while and you do incur some charges, it should be very cheap because the only thing that we are doing that would incur charges would be uploading a file to an S3 bucket. If you use an empty file, it shouldn't cost you anything really, but I want to tell you this up front because I am not responsible for your AWS bill, as this content is for educational purposes only. And now that we've got that out of the way, let's hop over to the computer and log into the AWS account to get started. Before we go any further, I want to mention one thing. Depending on when you are watching this video, your AWS console may look a little different than mine, and that's okay. As I've used the AWS console over the years, the teams at AWS have made changes to the various pages in the console to try to solve usability issues that end users like us have faced. As a result, I'm not going to focus too much on what each and every page does, but I'll discuss what we are trying to accomplish each and every step of the way, so please do your best to follow along. If you have never created an AWS account before and you go to aws.amazon.com, your page will probably look something like this. And so you can always go to the top right and create a brand new AWS account. I have already created an account, and so I'm gonna go ahead and close this page and I'm gonna open up my other browser where I'm already logged in. I have already created an IAM user uh, named Jared. And so you can always see at the top right which account I am using at that point in time. So uh, this is my Jarrett user. It is an administrative type account, it has all the permissions in AWS account, so I won't be restricted whenever I try to do anything. So as a reminder, we're gonna be creating an IAM user, creating an S3 bucket, we're gonna create an IAM policy, we're gonna attach the IAM policy to the user, and finally, we're gonna create an IAM group, attach the policy to the group, and attach the IAM user that we create to that group. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it uh, and create our IAM user. Now there's three ways to get basically anywhere in the AWS console, uh, depending on like what type of service you're trying to access. In this case, we're trying to access the AWS IAM service. And there's, like I mentioned, three ways to get there. You can most often find it here in a recently visited uh, section, whenever you first log into the AWS console. But if it is not there, you can click up here on the services section, scroll down to security, identity, and compliance, click on that, then scroll down and find I am here. If you have a hard time finding it or there's too many categories and, and whatnot, you can always go to the top bar and find the search box and just type I am. It'll bring it up here. And then this is actually my preferred way of doing this rather than trying to find it in that services list because there's so many AWS services these days. Um, I just get lost in there. So I always search for it and I click on IAM and I get to uh, IAM this way in the console. Now this is the IAM dashboard. In a brand new account, uh, you might have a couple of things here that have like a, a red triangle here with like an exclamation in it uh, indicating that there are security recommendations for you to resolve. We're not going to focus on those uh, at this point in time, because we're focused on learning how to use IAM in the first place. So uh, if you come down here, you can see how many user groups you've got, how many users, roles, policies, identity providers, so forth and so on. The three that we are going to contain uh, concern ourselves with today are users, policies, and user groups. 
We aren't going to worry about roles or identity providers in this video. So let's go ahead and get started by creating our first IAM user. And we can either click on this number here, or we can find it here on the left-hand side and click on users this way. So we are going to create a new user by clicking add users. We're going to give that user a name. And in this case, I'm going to name uh, the new user Ted. We can also decide if we want to grant Ted access to AWS console. And there's two ways to typically work with things in AWS. There's either the console access or there is programmatic access. For now, we are going to just enable console access uh, by checking this. And we're going to leave the default here. We're going to let it automatically generate a password for us. And then we're going to make Ted create a new password the next time Ted signs in. So we're going to leave that checked as well. And this is just a really good security uh, practice in general, um, especially like whenever you're an administrator and you're creating IAM users on behalf of other people. So we're going to leave that checked. We're going to click Next. And at this point in time, you could start granting permissions to a new IAM user on this page. We could add the user to a group. We could copy existing permissions from another user, or we can attach policies directly. We are not going to do any of these right now. I want to show each of these things step by step. So we're, uh, if you were going to add a user to a group, this blue box would probably not be here and it would show a list of the groups that you could add the user to. So we're gonna go ahead and click next since we don't wanna attach any, any permissions via any of these uh, mechanisms right now. So we'll click next. We get a summary page about the user that we are creating, about their password, so forth and so on. And because we are requiring the user to change their password the next time they log in, automatically AWS is going to add in a permissions policy. Uh, the IAM user change password policy. And this is an AWS managed policy and you don't have to worry about it, uh, but just wanted to let you know that you can typically only attach five different IAM policies to a user uh, directly. So this is gonna count against those five. So we're gonna create the user. Uh, and then on this page, we now have a console sign in URL link. We have the username and we have the password. So we can actually copy this password. I'm going to save it elsewhere. But I've copied that password. And I am going to open a new browser and log in as this user. So I'm going to copy this sign in URL, go back to my browser. And I'm going to be pretty much operating in, in both of the windows at the same time. So we'll type in Ted. We'll copy the password, we'll put it over here, and we're going to go ahead and sign in. Now, uh, as mentioned, Ted has to change the password the first time Ted logs in. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to give it, give Ted a new password, and this password will confirm to the AWS accounts password uh, policy. So we'll go ahead and confirm that password change. So I'm going to go ahead and return to the user list. And we can see Ted has been created. In a new account, you get a lot of these like pop-ups. And so we'll click done and we'll get, uh, get those out of the way. So we can see in this right browser, we're logged in as Ted. This is an incognito window um, on the left. This is just like a normal uh, Google Chrome window. And so we can still see that we're still logged in as this administrative user, Jared. At this point in time, we are gonna use the admin user to create a new S3 bucket. So I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna search for S3 and I'm gonna create a S3 bucket. I'm not gonna dwell on this since the focus of this video is not S3. Oh, this is my earlier uh, bucket. I don't know why it's showing it up there, but it's there, whatever. So we'll call this AFC team pictures or pics in this case. And we'll leave all the defaults and we'll click create bucket. Okay, so we got the AFC team picks bucket. And then I'm going to, just to make this a little easier on myself, I'm gonna go ahead and open up IAM again. Now uh, that we've created the S3 bucket AFC team picks, we're gonna come back over to IAM. 
And once again, we're in this admin user and I'm gonna come over here to policies. I'm going to create a new IAM policy by clicking this create policy in the top right. The first thing I've got to do is I've got to decide what type of access I'm granting or what types of permissions I'm granting. So I will choose a service. And in this case, we want Ted to be able to read and write files in an S3 bucket. So we're in, uh, we see the full list of all the services in AWS. And we can scroll down in, to S3 or because there's so many services, we can just search for it. So we'll click on S3. And we are going to give, uh, right now we're going to give Ted three different permissions. The first permission is called list all my buckets. So if there are no restrictions on the S3 bucket itself, and it's in the same account as the IAM user, and the IAM user has list all my buckets, um, permission, an IAM user will be able to see all the S3 buckets that that IAM user has permissions to, to see. And you can always see uh, a description of what these various uh, pieces of access grant by clicking on this little question mark next to them. So if we click on this, we can see grants permission to list all buckets owned by the authenticated sender of the request. Now, what this means is if Ted has permissions to a bucket to be able to see that bucket, then when Ted is signed in, Ted will be able to see the bucket. That's the long-winded way of a simpler description. So we're gonna grant that permission. The next permission that we are going to grant is list bucket. And what this is, is this permission gives a user or role the ability to, to list objects inside of an S3 bucket. So uh, the list all my buckets gives the permission to see that the bucket exists. The list bucket permission gives the ability to see the files or objects inside of the bucket. So see that the bucket exists is list all my buckets. See the files inside of a given bucket is list bucket. Now, um, we are also going to come in here to the read section and we are going to give the permission get object. And uh, what get object does is it allows you to download or retrieve the objects inside an S3 bucket. So to kind of recap, list all my buckets is be able to see that the bucket exists. List bucket is be able to see the files inside of the S3 bucket. And this get object is be able to retrieve the file inside the S3 bucket. We're gonna come down here to resources and we are going to restrict access. AWS really pushes you to, towards a policy of least permissions. It's good security practice. So we're gonna add, we're gonna click on this add ARN and we're gonna say AFC team picks. I believe that's what we call the bucket. Yeah, we'll just double check here, AFC team picks. And so we'll click add and then we are going to click on this and we're gonna, this is for the uh, get object permissions. So once again, we're gonna add AFC team picks here is the bucket name. And then we're gonna click on this any, which is gonna give basically be able to retrieve any file inside that S3 bucket, regardless of where it's at in the bucket. And we're gonna click add. Now, if you were like me and you always work with the JSON version of this, um, you can click on JSON up here and see a JSON description or JSON syntax version of this IAM policy. And so we can see our JSON formatted version. And so we can see that we can get objects inside of the AFC team picks bucket via this resource statement. And then we can see that we can list the files inside the bucket with this other resource. And then finally, we can see that we can see the AFC team picks uh, bucket via this section here with the list all my buckets permission. We're gonna click next tags, and then we're gonna skip this we're going to click next and review, and we're going to give this my policy uh, as the name. We'll give it a description. Great time to subscribe. And then we're going to click create policy. Oh, 
uh, description can't contain an exclamation. My apologies. So we'll click create policy. Now the IAM policy has been created and you can see this my policy here. Now we are going to then go back over to IAM users. We're going to click on Ted and we are going to add permissions. So we're going to come, here to, come down here to the uh, permissions policy section. We're going to click add permissions. We're going to click add permissions again. And then we are going to click attach policies directly. We're going to search for my policy. We're going to click that checkbox and then click next. And then we're going to click add permissions. Once I do this, and we come over here to Ted's account, uh, we're going to click on S3 right now. Well, since I have not yet actually finished adding the permissions, Ted will not be able to see the bucket. Once I click add permissions, that policy will be attached to, to Ted, and those permissions will be granted to Ted. And Ted will then be able to see the S3 bucket AFC team picks. So let's go ahead and click add permissions. And we can now see, this is the Ted, uh, Ted user details page, that that my policy has been attached. We come over here to Ted's browser and we click on this refresh icon. We can now see AFC team picks. I was doing some work earlier. Uh, and so that's why we see this AFC team pictures. This is a bug right now. Um, we shouldn't actually be able to see this at all but we can now see the AFC team picks bucket. And we see that there's no objects in the bucket. So let's, as Ted, try to upload a file to this S3 bucket. We click on upload and I will drag in the file and we're trying to upload it here into AFC team picks. We click upload and we get uh, upload failed. And this is because Ted does not have permissions to upload files to the S3 bucket. However, if we come over here as the administrator uh, type, type account and I upload a file as the administrator into the AFC team picks, we can see that the administrator does have permissions to upload the file. So once again, the admin.txt file is what I'm uploading. The upload succeeded. So the admin file exists because the admin had permissions. Ted.txt, that file does not exist because Ted doesn't have permissions. So go ahead and close this. And as Ted, we can see the admin.txt file exists, which you can see Ted's account up here. You can see the admin file here. And over here is my admin account, Jared. So let's go back over here uh, and update the IAM policy to be able to upload files. So we'll go over here and click on my policy and we will edit the policy. We go ahead and click this to collapse this. We'll click edit policy. And we are going to take a quick look. This one's list all my buckets. This one is list bucket, get object. We're going to go ahead and click on this the actions here and we're going to add in the ability to put object now once again get object allows you to retrieve files from the s3 bucket put object is the opposite of that allows you to write files to add objects to a bucket so we're going to click on put object and that will be that and so we'll go ahead and review policy and if we want to get into the details of this, we can. We're going to save changes. And finally, we can take a quick look at that. So now we have put object permissions, get object permissions uh, on our bucket. And so Ted will now be able to be able to upload files uh, to the S3 bucket, which we can go ahead and try again right now. So come back over here. I will grab Ted's file and we will drop it here. So now we click upload. The upload succeeds because Ted now has permissions to upload files to the S3 bucket. And we can see both the admin file exists, Ted's file exists that Ted has uploaded. So 
Um, the last thing I wanted to cover is I want to switch over to instead of granting the permissions to TED uh, directly via the IAM policy attachment on the IAM user account, I want to actually remove this. So I'm going to come over here. I want to show you a bit, a uh, small bit. Um, whenever I go to TED's IAM user and I click on this My Policy and I remove it and click Remove Policy, TED will no longer have permissions to see that bucket, the AFC Team Fix bucket. And then we'll reload the page. Sometimes the AWS console doesn't pick it up right away, but we can see that Ted no longer has permissions to see that bucket. So that being said, oh, yep. See the, the console takes a little bit uh, to sync up with the IAM changes. I've seen it usually take up to about a minute for an IAM policy change to take effect. So we might see this intermittently. See, sometimes we see it, sometimes we don't. Um, and if we refresh the page, hopefully uh, we won't see that again. Yep, the, the bucket is gone. So any IAM policy changes may take, I would say approximately up to a minute for them to actually take effect. So that being said, let's do the last bit here, which is create an IAM group, attach the IAM policy to the group, and then attach TED to that group so that TED gets the permissions via the group. And you might ask yourself, like, why do I want to create a user group? Well, imagine if you had another person uh, that Ted was similar to. Uh, maybe they both happen to be AFC Richmond uh, coaches. And so we create an AFC Richmond coaches user group. And we add Ted to that group. And then we attach this my policy, actually, we're not going to do Ted do this right now. Um, we're just going to attach the my policy to the group. And so we're going to create that AFC Richmond coaches group. So now this user group has the IM policy that we created earlier. Ted is not a member of that group yet. So Ted does not have the permissions to see that bucket and write files and read uh, files from that bucket. So if we come in here and look at the users in this we have no users ted's not a part of this group so let's go ahead and add ted click add now ted is a member of this group so if we reload this I may need to refresh the page the console for ted but ted should now be seeing this bucket this afc team picks bucket and we can see the files once again um, user groups are really good if you want to have multiple users with the same permissions and you don't want to attach the IAM policy to multiple users. This is a great way to scale up permissioning. So if we decided we wanted to create a new user and we gave that user the name Coach Beard, for example, and gave Coach Beard console access and so on and so on, um, we could then add Coach Beard to the AFC Richmond Coaches group and Coach Beard would then have those permissions. And so let's actually test this, test this. So let's go ahead and sign out and let's log back in. Um, we're gonna use this URL here. And I'm gonna use Coach Beard and we're gonna copy this console password. And we'll log in as Coach Beard. I think I got that password right. Yep. Okay. So we got that password right. Now we can come here to S3. And we can see that Coach Beard will automatically, by virtue of being added to that group, we'll be able to see AFC team picks. We will see the objects that have already been created and uploaded to that. And if we want to, we can even go through the process of creating a new file for Coach Beard and use that to test Coach Beard's access. So let's go ahead and upload this file. Here we go. Now Coach Beard can upload files to this S3 bucket by being a member of the IAM user group. So we can see Coach Beard and Ted and admin 
have all uploaded files to this S3 bucket. I hope you found this content on how to use AWS IAM to read and write files on an S3 bucket helpful. If you did, click that like button. If you need a refresher on exactly what AWS IAM is, make sure you click this video right here. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of my content on AWS and DevOps. Otherwise, stick around for another video of mine. Until next time.